Well, hello, Bishop Wooden here. Glad to be back with you. I'm excited about the wonderful things that the Lord is doing, and I pray that you are doing well. Now, listen, I want to say to you, happy Jesus Pride Month. As you know, we have proclaimed the month of June, at least at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, to be Jesus Pride Month. You know, President uh, uh, Clinton and uh, uh, President Obama and uh, followed uh, by President Trump proclaimed uh, the month of June LGBT month. Well, well, let me tell you, the God of the Bible made all of the months. And uh, I, I, I'm just one, I don't think that we ought to just stand idly by and say nothing when the world takes the wonderful time, seasons, and days that God has given us and designate them to things that they should not be designated to. And uh, I love all people. I want to see men saved. I want to see people come to Christ. But you know what? I believe, as never before, that it's time for the Christians. We're going to do it with love, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it with grace and style, but we're going to do it. It's time for Christians to speak up. You see, my friends, the name of the game today is our opponents, the devil and, and, and those who oppose us, they don't care what we think. They don't care what we believe. They don't care. It doesn't bother them how we really feel about anything. Their position is, whatever your feelings are, you better not say it. You better keep it all to yourself. And if you dare offer a differing opinion or if you dare disagree with certain ones on any issue, then you are labeled, you are criticized. Uh, they try to use uh, uh, ostracism. That is a tool of the devil and, and criticism and, they, and to ridicule you into being silent and you get the message. It used to be subtle. It's not even subtle anymore. It's over the top. They're saying to those of us who believe the Bible, shut up with that Bible stuff. Shut up with that Jesus stuff. We don't want to hear those scriptures. And if you say something, you say it in your church and you better be careful how you say it at your church because if we get a tape of you saying what we don't think you ought to say at your church, then we'll put that out there and people will attack you for making a stand in your own church. Well, there are those of us who push back and we say that free speech is a part of our guaranteed right. Freedom of religion is part of our guaranteed right uh, as Americans and as, as human beings. And the Bible says, check this out, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion, show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. So it's the will of God that the Christians speak up. Paul said to Timothy, hey man, in the last days, I charge you. He gave him a military term. I charge you to preach the word and be instant in season and out of season. And my friends, I'll tell you, it's, it, is, it is in season and it is out of season. You know, that is preach the word when it is convenient and preach it when it is not. Amen. So we're excited and we're having a ball here at the upper room, just enjoying Jesus Pride Month. We're just so proud to be out of the closet telling everybody that we love Jesus. We're so proud to, uh, uh, and we have rainbow colors also, but they're the actual colors of the rainbow. All seven of them, not the six with the LGBTQ flag, but the seven. And, and we, we, we celebrate the God of the Bible. We own him. Amen. We're not ashamed of him, nor are we ashamed of his standards, nor are we ashamed of his statutes and his commandments. And among the things that he told us to do, he said, love one another uh, as I have loved you. And there is nothing that is more loving than telling people the truth and warning men and women everywhere to turn from their sins. Now, listen, this is a special week because this is the North Carolina third AIM conference going is going on this week. North Carolina third AIM week. We are in Spartanburg, 
South Carolina at that powerful church down there uh, called the Promised Land Church of God in Christ, the Promised Land home of the Spartanburg Discipleship Center Church of God in Christ with one of the finest and most powerful men of God in existence today, who is the pastor of the church. He's my chief of staff. He is the superintendent of the South Carolina district. He is the pastor, man of God, superintendent, Tommy Eugene Quick with his lovely wife, Valerie. And we're down there with them churching folk in, uh, at the Spartanburg Discipleship Center. And along with those South Carolina saints that we're coming from all over North Carolina, you know, uh, North Carolina third has churches in, in North Carolina, South Carolina, and in Virginia. The Lord's blessing us to spread out. And listen, we're going to be churching all week long. Well, actually, it's three nights, three nights, three nights, and we're going to be blessed on Wednesday night. The national president of the AIM Department of the Church of God in Christ, our international AIM chairman, the Bishop Linwood E. Dillard is going to be ministering Wednesday night of this week. And you can't you can't miss uh, Bishop uh, Dillard. If you've heard him preach before, you know that he is a preacher and God is going to bless us all uh, in that service. I was going to say God's going to bless us all day long. He's going to bless us all day long. But that, that night we're going to be blessed of the Lord and highly favored. And I'm excited about it. And before I talk about the, the next speaker, I want to talk about the uh, NC Third AIM president. He is Superintendent Willie Bamberg, Superintendent of the Virginia District of North Carolina Third Jurisdiction. The young man is doing a fantastic job. He and his lovely wife, Lady Josephine Bamberg, I am so proud of them and excited about the work that they're doing and the entire AIM department. I'm telling you, we have youth coming from all over. There are so many powerful things planned. The day sessions will be packed. And let me tell you what our conference is. Let me tell you what our conference is. It is God seekers seeking God till kingdom come. God seekers seeking God till kingdom come. The point is we are directing our young people to seek the God of the Bible until kingdom come, not just for, for Christ's return, but for them to be able to recognize, participate in, and walk in the role of the kingdom on earth in these last days. We are intentionally seeking to raise up militant young people, radical young people for Christ. Young people who are not ashamed of the gospel, young people who are not ashamed to achieve, young people who want to look like somebody, be somebody, walk like someone, talk like someone, train our men to be gentlemen and our women to be ladies. We want them to score high in school, soar with great grades. We want them to represent Jesus Christ everywhere they go. Hey, we want them to look walk and talk like winners and we want them to be articulate and and brave and courageous serving the lord in the beauty of holiness yes and we have uh workshops and we have things that are designed to make these things happen amen in our youth in our youth let me tell you in every church you want to know you want to see your future you want to see where you're headed Look at your youth department. I've been to churches and they call on the young adult choir to sing. And, and you know what? People got up and they were 45 and 50, 55 and 60. Now listen, when you're 60 and you're part of the young adult choir, the church is in trouble. The church is dying. Listen, we've got to invest in our young people. We will not be in the positions that we're in uh, today forever. One day, you leaders out there who are watching, you will be retired. You will be on the front row. Role. You won't be center stage. And the people who take over will be the young people that you train. Now, based on what you're training them, based on, based on what you're teaching them, based on what you're saying to them, what kind of church do you think the future holds? 
What do you think is coming? Well, we want to make sure our young people love Jesus. Soul out. We do not promote hip hop Christianity. We do not promote a, a brand of Christianity where we teach the young people to look like thugs, look like bums, look like who and what they're not, look like they're street people, look like they're part of a gang. And then, oh, all of a sudden you find out, well, actually, they're born again Christians. No, we don't want Christianity by surprise. We want people to know when they see you coming from a mile away, there's something different about you. And we don't want that difference to be the appearance of being deficient. But we want that difference to be that they walk uh, in the spirit of holiness, in the spirit of love, and they look like they're on their way somewhere. Hallelujah. Man, I'm excited about it. And on Thursday night, Superintendent Willie Bamberg, our AIM chairman, will be delivering the word of the Lord. And I'll tell you, I'm excited about what this man of God has to say on Thursday night. You want to be in place to hear from this preacher. Friday night, yours truly uh, will be preaching the word of the Lord. God's given me a word. God's given me a word. God has given me a word for the saints of God in general, but for our youth in particular. And on Friday night of this week, you want to make sure pastors, you want to make sure superintendents, you want to make sure leaders, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and all the surrounding areas, you want them to be in place to hear the word of the Lord that God has given me to share with our youth. We've got to build our young boys. We've got to make men out of them. We've got to build our young ladies, young girls. We've got to make ladies out of them. We want our men educated, sober, sound, and straight. We want our young women strong, dainty, intelligent, and straight. We want them saved and love the Lord, in love with Jesus Christ. You know, it's fashionable now for many young people to, um, to be um, uh, disenchanted with church. To, to not want to attend, not want to be a part, and not want to come and all that kind of stuff. Well, we're bucking all those trends. We're going against all that stuff. There's nothing like the church. There's nothing like serving Jesus. There's nothing like living this kind of life. I want to say to every young person who's watching today, do yourself a favor. Get in the Lord and stay there. And the sooner the better. Please don't waste your 20s in sin, then come to the Lord in your 30s. You have thrown away a decade. Get saved as soon as possible. The Lord saved me when I was 16. I hate that I didn't get him when I was 15. I really wish I could have got it when I was 14. So forth and so on. Because living for Jesus, there is nothing like it. Now, I've run a little long, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm glad to be back. We had a marvelous little family vacation. We took some time off and uh, uh, missed your own last week. And we're going to be uh, in South Carolina at, AIM, at the AIM conference this week. And uh, uh, we're just excited about the things that God is doing. It's going to be an awesome summer, I do believe. I believe should the Lord delay his coming and he allow us to live, we're going to see some great things in Jesus Christ. We're going to make a stand for Jesus Christ. We're going to push back against the world because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I'll see you at the North Carolina Third Jurisdiction's AIM Conference 2019. God seekers seeking God till kingdom come. God bless you. Listen, my wife is all excited about it. Pam is excited at, uh, about the conference and the workers are excited about the conference. And we're just uh, we're just coming from far and near. And I'm excited about being down there in Spartanburg. Uh, I, 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 I tell the Spartanburg people, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. But every time I go there to preach, I always exhale when I arrive and I go, Whew, I made it to the promised land. Well, we're going to make it to the promised land, and we're going to have church, church, church down in the promised land, and I want you to be a part of our AIM conference. We'll see you there.